Welcome back to Pastor Talks. Uh, at CCLC, we do this every week uh, to encourage you to be in the Word and to encourage you in your walk, uh, and as well as to encourage you to encourage people. So we're going to open the Word, dive into the Word, talk about the Word, in the hopes that the Word does what the Word is known for, and that is encouraging us and sending us out. Now we've been going through a couple of these you know, just smaller books in the New Testament and listening to different authors. So we've talked to John, we've talked to Paul, and so now we're going to talk to Peter. Um, and we're going to do that through um, some of the Peter's epistles. So First uh, and Second Peter is what we're going to go through over the next couple weeks, and so I hope that you would join us in that. So without taking up any more time, I'm going to dive right into 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 reads this. Peter, an apostle of Christ Jesus, to those who are elect exiles in the disputation in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithyria, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Christ Jesus and sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiable, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I'm going to pause just for a second in the middle of this section and address that fact, that we are blessed because God has caused us <clears throat> to be born again. That something is born in us because of Jesus through baptism in his name. And in that, we are sent out with an inheritance as a people that is imperishable, unchangeable, undefiable. It is by itself all that you need. Good, keep reading with me. Verse six it says, in this, you rejoice. Though now for a little while, <coughs> if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. So that the testing genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes when it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ, through whom you now see him. Do you love him, though you have not now seen him? You believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You rejoice in that. We take life in that. It is what fills us up. It's what sends us out. It is by the promise and the life that was given to us by Jesus that we celebrate these things. I'm outside today for that reason, that it is beautiful today it is green it is cool i can sit out here with the breeze blowing on my face and take in all that god is and all that he has already given me and be reminded of so many things that are essential to walking through what is promised to be a difficult season one point or another that there is a moment that is difficult and we walk through those in the promises that he's given us and keep reading with me, verse 10. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched, inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. G 
Jesus is a promise that's been given for generations. And what we celebrate today because of Jesus was waited for with anticipation. I'm going to take that in for a second and realize that you are living in the realities of the hopes and dreams of the people of God for generations. And keep reading with me, verse 13. It says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that has been brought to you at the revelation of Christ Jesus. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. And if you call him as father, who judges impartially according to each one deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout your time of exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited by your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Be obedient in the preparing of yourself. Recognize that we are in exile. Recognize that this is difficult. Recognize that in the midst of all of those things that have been given freely to you, the knowledge that is the difficulty of this current season is not new. So prepare yourself by being obedient to him, setting your mind on him and what he's given you, and it will get you through where you are. Go ahead and keep reading with me. Verse 20. It says he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by being obedient to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass and its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. The good news does not change. The good news does not wither. The good news does not stop being good and it does not stop filling people. So fill yourself with that. And when you do, you are more able to give love to those in your life. Love one another with a sincere brotherly love because that is what's been given to you. You have been given love and life and peace and hope. You've been given glory and a kingdom and an inheritance that can't be taken away. And because of each and every one of those things, we look at the person across from us with love, grace, life, peace. So that's what I leave you with today. The good news. You are filled. You are whole. You are clean. And you are sent out to be something that the world is not. Be set apart. Be holy. I'm going to pray over you. But before I do, I want to remind you that our church, the Christian Church of Loudoun County, has a worship night every Wednesday from 6 to 7. And what we do is we just, it's a very light, very uh, casual, uh, informal worship time. One, two, three songs, a quick devotional thought, some light discussion, and we leave being filled with all that he is and all that he's called us to be. I hope you'll be there with us tonight. 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And if you can't, I hope you're with us in spirit. I pray over your day, and I hope it's blessed. Father, you are good, and what you've given to us is good. So, Father, help us to be then good stewards of what is good, to be reflections of what is good, to be carriers of what is good, to be life givers, peace bringers, reflections of a good and perfect heavenly Father. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ who gives us each and every one of these things. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen.